Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you all the steps and uh, tools I use to make this uh, magical wizard tree. I don't know the type of wood it is, but it's a fairly hard wood. Okay, let's get on with the games! My name's Jordy Johnson. My name's Grumpy Jesse, and this is Carving Fusion by Jordy Johnson. See ya! Okay, so I have this round piece of wood here. I don't know what type of wood it is. It's pretty tight grained. Um, no clue, the bark's still on it. You can see that stuff there. It's kind of got bumps in it. So I got gifted this to me from my good buddy Pete. So I'm gonna make a tree out of this piece. You guys, trees can be all different shapes and different sizes. You know, you can make little hedge trees, you can make big trees, small trees, whatever you want to do. I think, in my opinion, it's best to start off with two types of pens. One pen for your, just to do your template, one pen to do your final cut, okay? So I will be taking this outside and running it on the bandsaw. I also want to say, the like I was told, the worst thing you can cut on a bandsaw is a piece of wood like this like if you're cutting it right here or here because it has a good chance of rolling and it can be very dangerous so you guys if you guys gonna cut a piece of wood like this on a bandsaw make sure you know what you're doing you can make a cradle to put it in but make sure you know what you're doing in it because it can roll the log and it's very very dangerous to do I was told so anyways this is just going to be, I don't even know what kind of tree this is going to be. I'm just going to open up my imagination and I'm going to have fun with it and hope it turns out. That's all you can do, I guess. So, you know, this is going to be like a tall, like big kind of like a, a redwood tree or a cedar tree. I don't know what kind of tree it's going to be, guys. Okay, let's just put it that way. So, here's our center line. Then you want to make it look like a cone. In my opinion the first shape should kind of look like a cone so it'll be thinner up top and thinner down here makes sense doesn't it trees are thinner up top and th thicker down at the bottom and where would your um, trunk be so my trunk would be here so anyways I'm gonna get all this drawn on and I'm gonna go make some cuts with uh, uh, my little bandsaw and then I'll come back okay I'll explain I'll just show you what Okay there, so I got it rounded off with my band. So you know what? It would have been just much easier just to carve it. Much easier. So you can see there it kind of still looks like a cone. My objective here is, oh, don't mind the tape on my hand. I got I got an infected cut there and just best not to get any more. I think there's a piece of wood stuck inside of it or something. But anyways, oh, it's you try you want to try your best not to make it look like a pine cone. So right now it's kind of shaped like a pine cone. There's lots of different ways you can do this too. You know, you can make your branches like, kind of like this. You know, like that kind of style all the way around. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make mine kind of, I'm going to, like I'm just, I'm challenging myself today guys. Mine are going to be one full piece all the way around. I've seen some guys online do them. And then I've looked up, uh, sorry, I'm holding my, my camera and my uh, film at the same time. So yeah, they're going to be one all the way around, kind of like, kind of like this. Okay, so I'm going to be using my cut saw bit to cut these in. It's a lot easier if I was doing this with my chainsaw carving, my chainsaw station, and um, do use my bigger tools, but I'm not there. And this is what I got to, uh, this is what I got to use. Like I... I'm using my RTX Black & Decker, okay, with the flex shaft. And I'm going to be using a cut saw Extreme Flame Burr to cut deep inside here. You know, you got to think of the trunk too, guys. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to take one step back, okay. The first thing I'm going to do is mark in where I'm going to cut for my trunk. I'm going to carve in my trunk first, because I think once your trunk's carved in, then you can take, you get a better, like, vision for the, how the tree should work anyways so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to carve the trunk in first i'm still going to use this cut saw taper burr guys go to the description below to get to the cut saws and this is going to be my deep cut under here this is about deep cuts guys like you know so you get the huge shadow effects so i want to cut these branches in all the way till you see a trunk all the way up the middle 
thicker, thinner, 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 thinner. Just like a real tree, kind of, if I can do it. Yep. Bye. Okay, so you can see there I got the, the tree trunk cut in. So you guys see that shadow effect? That's what you want to try and do, get when you guys are doing this, right? So, you know, this is a self-standing tree, but I also want to say this tree is going to be mounted on a piece of wood for a little theme that I'm going to be making over the next time. It's going to be a wizard theme. So, you know, you see how I undercut? Look underneath there. Okay, so that's what gives you the shadow effect. And make it come down on a nice slope. Guys, this is my opinion. Make it come down on a nice slope here, right? So now, you know, like this, I could just leave this like a tree the way it is and just cut some little slits in here. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is me challenging myself and want to see if I can do a different style tree. So now I got one line here. Now I'm going to cut deeper, deep in this line with that cuts all bit, the taper bit, and then... There's going to be branches, branch, branch. They're going to be real close to each other. I don't know. See how it goes. I'm just having a good time, I guess. Yep. Okay, so this tree is going to take a lot of carving, like, like a lot, it's a lot of work on my Dremel, right? It's, there's a lot of bulking out. So you see these, how they're kind of rounded this way, like that way? I want them to be rounded, like sloped in, sloped in and out that way. Let me see if I can get a pencil, like, like this. Whew, not rounded. So I'm going to make them all rounded at first, going up and down. And then I'll come back and then I'll slope them out. I don't know. This is a, this is going to be a whimsical tree, guys. It's just me screwing around trying to challenge myself. But this, um, I just want to take a few minutes about talk about um, hate and bullying and all that stuff. A guy named, um, he's one of my subs and he's on our Facebook, on the Facebook group, uh, Carving Fusion wood, World of Wood Carvers. He's a, he's a learning wood carver. He's an artist. He's an old tattoo artist and stuff. He's done some time in prison tattoos in there, he said. But um, he posted uh, one of his carvings, a uh, wood spirit on uh, on a group and uh, wood carving group on Facebook. I'm not too sure what group it was, but the the pe some guys, some wood carvers. I don't know. I guess they call themselves pros. Maybe they are pros. I, I don't know. I really don't give a shit. But they attacked him. They thought it was me posting on there, and they thought I w I had a fake account and I was what's it called trolling their sites which I have absolute zero time for, for those guys because, well, I just got no time for them. But they started attacking Dave and uh, saying that he's uh, he has no depth because they thought it was me. It has no depth. And the carvings, uh, what's it called, uh, hacking or what's he, he's a butcher. And uh, they then they realized that it wasn't me. And they started saying, like, uh, I have no rights teaching woodworking. Um, I'm a butcher. I'm a hack. Um, who do I think I am? I give woodworkers a bad name. <laughs> How do I give woodworkers a bad name? You know, I've taken the last week or two to process this, but how do I give woodworkers a bad name? 
Those guys, if I give myself a bad name, I give myself a bad name. But I don't speak for them. I don't give a fuck what those guys do. I really don't. Because those type of people, they're arrogant, they're pricks, and they think their stuff's the best. And truthfully, the truth is, why I started this YouTube channel is because I couldn't find any good good channels that showed what type of burrs and what kind of dremels and what kind of stuff to use. I couldn't find any stuff. And I said, when I get, when I think I get good enough, I'm going to start a channel. And that's why I started the channel. So those pros out there that think they're the best and they're better than all of us and they're better than each other. Those pros out there, they're the reason I started this channel. Okay. Because they, they thought they were too good to show what tools they use. Don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking for all of them. I'm speaking for a few of them. Maybe four or five of them that like to, uh, they got the hate on for Carving Fusion. That's their problem. This channel started because of those guys. That's why this channel started. So let them hate, guys. You know, it's just easy. Dave did the right thing. He just blocked and removed himself from the group. I would have done the same thing too. Because they're keyboard warriors. They're keyboard warriors. And even if somebody came, came to me face to face and said, Jordy, your carving suck. I'd say, yeah, well, see you later, buddy. I don't have time for you. Why would you guys want to have time for fucking idiots like that? You know what I mean? So here's a shout out to you, Dave. This video is for you. And uh, keep up the great work and screw the haters, man. Keep on. And another thing too, guys, I want to say, they're just all that I've thought about how I'll deal with this. And, you know, I let it get to me. But you know what? The bottom line is they're just going to make me want to get better and better and better. And the more subscribers I get to this channel, I understand the more haters are going to come. They're coming. And I'm expecting it. I've talked to a couple of good friends of mine about it. Uh, just Carve Rob. His channel, I've talked to BAP at uh, I Can Carve, and I've talked to uh, my buddy Phil Grope in, here in Langley, British Columbia. And they said, yeah, they're going to come, but you just kind of have to keep on moving on and let them, let them make you get better. That's how I'm letting it affect me. I'm letting them make me get better. Thanks, haters. Love you. Okay, I had to stop carving here for a minute because th this is a lot of bulk, and it's a lot to do for this little tiny burr, guys. Okay, the cuts all taper. So what I've done, dun, 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 I've upgraded to this beast. This is on my Fordham Flex Chef. This is a quarter inch, guys. Cuts all quarter inch taper burr. Oh, Jesus. Look at this sucker. Look at the size difference. This sucker's a kit. This sucker's the skin ripper. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll be taking it really easy, but I'll be removing, removing a lot of bulk with this thing. This is when you, you know, just be safe. Just be safe. Knock on wood, Jordy. Knock on wood. Guys, I want to try and explain something too that I learned from just Carve Rob. You know, when you're using an aggressive piece like this, and you're gonna, this is just an example, guys. It could be any which way, like you have your piece. But when you're using a piece like this and it's cutting down here, you know, look where you got your hand where you're holding the piece, okay? If this thing, because it would want to kick back this way, this piece would want to kick back towards you, right? You know, if, you, if you're holding it this way and it kicks back, boom, it's going to hit your thumb. It's going to rip your thumb, okay? So I don't know if you noticed when I was just doing that other filming, I'd move my arm away. Because if this thing wants to jump, hold, hold your hand back here. So if it jumps, it's going to miss. Not jump and hit your fingers, right? Okay, so you hold it, jumps, hits your thumb. Boom, this sucker would rip your thumb pretty good. Hold your piece. So if this thing wants to jump... It's going to miss your whole hand and your entire body, okay? I don't know if that makes sense, but any which way you hold it. So if you're curving here, it could jump, boom, hit your thumb. But if you hold it back here like this, it jumps. It has nothing to hit. It will miss your hand. And believe me, guys, it will save you a lot of pain and 
well, getting an infected cut when you're carving wood, I guess. One more thing. This is a piece of that uh, rubbery mat. You know, I got, you know, you put it on bolts so stuff won't slip. So I got this from Pete. So because I figured this is, this is such an aggressive cutter. I want to have two hands on this, on my hand piece. So having this anti-slip stuff on here will help me. I'll be able to hold the hand piece down with my palms like this. And then I'll be able to use a cutter with both hands on it. So it has less chance of jumping. Okay, so you can see this stuff's like kind of anti-grip stuff. You can this you can get this stuff at the dollar store. Not this stuff, but smaller stuff like it's to put in drawers or I don't know. It's for boats kind of stuff. Anyways, start going through. Right. Hey guys, I also should have said when you when you're using this or any kind of cloth or like you're wearing a hoodie with a that has the strings coming down, be careful not to get your hand your uh, burr stuck in that because that's what will break your flex shaft inside here. Okay, just give I'm just gonna give this a touch, just to show you an example. Well, that doesn't work, but whatever. It can wrap up in this and uh, break your flex shaft and maybe bounce and hit you in the face too. So be real careful. But anyways. Oops. Anyways, this is where I got lots of the blocking out. It's just a whimsical tree, guys. Um, my problem starting with this piece, so it's not shaped like a triangle tree, it was just too long. You know, I could have cut it down here, just made it a lot shorter, because then it could have made much more of a triangle piece. Do you know what I mean? Because that's just too long, and it would be a slow triangle, and whatever. I don't care. So... This is when you sit and have your coffee, your smoke, your, a joint, whatever you want to do. Pop, water, relax, stare at it and see how you want to uh, improve it. So what I want to do now for myself is I want to, well, let me find a pen here. Let me, I want to make these kind of like that. You know what I mean? Like sloped out, rounded. Not this way. But I want them to go this way, Whoosh, like that. We'll see, see if it happens. I don't know. Okay, so I figured this sheet is good enough for me. Okay, I'm not gonna make them go like that. It's just, it's just too much work. So what I'm gonna do now is I gotta really undercut under here, so you can see those are just kind of flat this way. So now I want to really undercut under there, and I'm gonna use my little uh, cut saw taper bit again. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to start carving some lines on. I'm going to get a little bit of wind action. So it goes that way all the way around the whole piece. I'll be using my cut saw flame burr for that, and then I'm going to do some wood burning too. So, yep, let it begin. Lots of work. Okay, so I got all my undercutting done, okay? Undercutting is getting under there. Okay. I just kind of feathered it back. That's what I mean, feathering back, guys, so you don't see any cut marks there. It's just nice, smooth transition. So I'm going to start off by doing my whoosh lines with this. I kind of got some lines drawn on. I want to make this look like it's kind of a little bit blowing, you know, so all those things are going to be cut this way. This is going to be a three layer thing. What I mean by that is I'm going to cut some quick lines with my cut saw extreme flame burr. Okay. And then I'm going to come along with my aluminum cutter and run it on edge like I do beard hairs. 
on the wood spirits, and then I'm gonna burn it, okay? So first layer, the cut saw, make, make some deeper cuts. This will make thinner cuts, and then the wood burning, all the little things in there, will make even thinner than this, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, sorry guys, I had to stop and say something else here too, which I think matters. Why those undercuts underneath each branch are so important, in my opinion, is because then you don't see the start, the starts where you start cutting, okay? So you can start carve, cutting like these lines here. You can start up and underneath here. Let's see if I can get some better lighting here. You can start up and underneath and you don't see the start cuts like you see there right here that's a start cut and you don't see it here look under here look at all those those are start cuts and you don't see them because you're you're up under underneath it so when you're looking at it straight on you don't see your start cuts you can start up under here and bring it all down does that make sense to you guys See all those, how messy it looks up under there? Right there, those two things, dead on. Start cuts. Put it like this, you don't see them. They're hidden. Nobody's gonna, when somebody's gonna buy one of your pieces, they're not gonna look, they're not gonna look under here and go, oh my God, look at those start cuts. That looks terrible, okay? This is gonna be mounted on a piece of wood. They're never gonna see it. Okay, okay, so I gotta start talking again. So sometimes when you, so my next move, I got that, those lines done, my next move is to use this. Sometimes it can't fit underneath there. See how it won't fit? It's not deep enough underneath there. So that's why it's good to have multiple different types of burrs on, on hand, okay? So this, where is that little one? Where did I put it? There it is, this little one, okay? is a miniature of this, but this is a metal working burr. This one, the big one is aluminum working cutter. This one's a metal working burr. And you guys can get this little set in my links below, okay? Like 20 bucks from China. So you see how this one won't get in there to put all the little cut marks in it, but this little one will, you know? So I'm gonna go along and do all the big ones first, and then I'm gonna come back and do all the little ones. You see how it gets right under there? Big one doesn't. Ooh. Okay, in the beginning of this video, I don't know if you guys will remember me saying, but like uh, the pine cone effect. So yeah, this is what I think. These three pieces are like a pine cone effect. They're just, you know, flat. They don't have much shape. You know, they just, it should be thinner, thicker, thicker, th thicker, 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 all the way down. But I knew that was going to happen when I started this piece. Okay, so I'm expecting that. So I got all my cuts done. You know, like... For example, guys, if you want to open your mind, I could cut this tree right here and make this part the trunk, you know, because it's got it's this this stuff, this flows nice, this flows nice. These ones are kind of plain, but you see this is nice flows, this flows nice. I cut it right here and make this part the trunk, and then it will look like a more proportionate tree. 
that makes any sense. Okay, so it's just knowing about your proportions and learning. And you all learn with time, that's all. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my little flap sander disc that I make. This is a 120 grit on here. You guys can see how to make them on my playlist. You can get these, uh, this uh, emery cloth sandpaper um, in the link below. So I'm going to quickly sand this and then we'll think about finishing it. Okay, so all the sanding's done. So now, the way you finish your piece, guys, can really make or break your piece. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little, I'm going to call myself the mad scientist here. Well, not really, but what I got mixed in here is some uh, water-based powdered wood dye. Okay? It's just, I've mixed it up in here. I'm not going to, I got it at Lee Valley here in British Columbia, Canada. This is a green color. I don't want this piece or my my wizard magical wizard theme to uh, be colored. I want it all basically the wood. I want it, the whole piece is going to be wood colored, but I want to have a little bit of green in this tree. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I got this. It's really diluted. I'm going to put some green on this tree. I got the base the trunk taped up so no green can get on there. I'm going to paint the whole tree here. Let's try it right now. Okay, so just a little light tint of green in there okay so I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna get heat get my heat gun this is a bone pe bone dry piece of wood guys okay it's bone dry then I'm gonna get my heat gun and I'm gonna dry all this green dye up all the water <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna dry the water up in the wood and then I'm gonna come along with my poly shade which I love using this stuff guys okay I'm gonna come along with it with my Ah, oh, Jesus. I'm going to go on and after with my poly shade, and then I'm going to sand the high points, okay? So let me get this green on, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, so I got the green on, and well, you know, it almost speaks for itself. All the yellows in there and stuff, the different colors. I missed a spot, some spots right there must fix oh no it's just more porous wood okay so anyways guys like I said I don't want the theme of my wizard thing to be um, colored I want to have a little bit of color in there but not too much so my next step is to begin to uh, blah 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 my next step I got my heat gun here now I'm gonna dry this whole thing off but I won't bore with you guys with filming this because, well, it's just boring. So I'll dry it all up. Make sure it's bone dry before I apply the oil. But you, wait till you see how much brighter it's going to go after I draw it. Here, watch this section right here. Just give it a second. You'll see it starting to really brighten up when it dries. See it? So much brighter it's going so I don't know it's, it's almost it's a nice color green it's the color of a tree I'll see if I'm gonna do any more things to it maybe I'll just leave it like this it's on the high points who knows okay you can see now how much brighter it's come okay So what I'm going to do now is again with my little flop sander, I'm going to go over and quickly sand the high points. Okay, we have a problem. Now I don't know if I want to, uh, maybe I should just leave it. But like I said, I don't want the, the mystical magic wizard themed thing to have lots of color in it. Well, I don't know, man. Well. I got this uh, lighter. Ah, screw it. I, I want to make it darker. It's just a little bit too bright for me. You can see how the high points really pop now. So, I got this color. What's this? If I can. Mission Oak. So, what I'm going to do now is coat it with this and then sand it with my buffing, with my little flap sander when it's still wet to bring out the high points again. Okay, so this is the next step. We're almost done. 
Holy shade, I love this stuff, guys. It adds kind of a little bit of a shine to it, so. Okay, well, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out besides the pine cone effect, but let's uh, let's darken this up. I think it's just a bit too bright for the theme I want to use. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Make or break. Make or break. Where's the rag? Yeah, so you'll still get a little bit of a green effect in there, but it went pretty dark. But that's okay. I like it better that way. Okay, so I'll finish this off. Okay, guys, it's done. The magical wizard tree is done. I like it. Looks like a gold color in there, kind of like, uh, I don't know, like flames a bit. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty neat. It's hard to get a full screenshot of it. Besides the pine cone effect. But whatever, you can look past it. So I hope uh, this video has helped somebody and you guys can uh, try one of these yourself. But it, look, it would look better if the bottom was more flared out. But I don't care. It's the first one I did and I knew what to expect. Oh, when I did the uh, trunk, I just used the uh, black poly shade because I think the trunk needs to be a little bit darker than the tree or vice versa. Just add some different colors in there. So yeah, that's that. She all done. Ha 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 ha!